I'm here between Austin and San Antonio with Jason Jones, the co-founder and CEO of R Squared, and they're starting their first test house here right behind me. What are you gonna build here? So we're gonna build a, a demo house here that is gonna showcase the marriage of uh, traditionally accepted uh, construction techniques and how they interplay with the 3D printed wall. Uh, bridge that education gap, uh, show folks that will potentially be buying houses like these in the future, uh, how this stuff's gonna work before they, uh, before they actually purchase. One thing you mentioned is you're already in touch with the fire department mm -hmm. down the street, which is great because some projects, like one in Louisiana, got all their permitting, everything was sorted out, they poured the slab, and then the fire marshal came and shut them down. They didn't like the sprinkler system. So uh, how have you been integrating them and other parties that will be involved in your future construction projects on this demo? Well, uh, starting from the, the construction background uh, and knowing what we need, the pieces that need to be put together uh, from design to the certificate of occupancy, right? Uh, in integrating from the very beginning, the design team, the inspection team, the municipality that we happen to be working in, uh, make sure that all of our codes are lined up, that we have early adoption and acceptance, uh, and as we're moving along that, we just want to get those benchmark checks. Yep, cool. You guys are good here. Let's keep moving forward and, and make this so that uh, we can see more people doing exactly what we're doing here. Awesome. Well, yeah. it's an honor to be here while you're starting the first day of this demo print. I know you have the big event coming up next week. Mm -hmm. uh, th this video will come out the same day as that. So hopefully you guys have a, a pretty much complete by then. You're working on the new projects. Today, if it's cool with you, I'd like to just follow what you guys are doing, get a couple of interviews while you guys are working, uh, and see how it goes. Absolutely. I'd love it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here with Chris Knotts, the CEO of R Squared, and we're standing in a field of some of the test prints you did to prepare for this. Uh, how was that, and what are you guys ready for now? Um, you know, well, it's been a little over a year in the making, you know, so a lot of planning went into this. We finally got our machine, all the training that went into it. Um, it's been really exciting to finally get this thing erected and, you know, start pushing some concrete out. Once we first started seeing them, uh, you know, being printed and then what, and improving the mix as we go along, I couldn't be happier. This video is brought to you by channel sponsor Ventures Equipment. They're actually using their equipment for this project today. They just kicked on the mixer pump system. The dry material will go up to the top, be partially mixed in the blue section where it will then be pushed into the orange section of the Ventures Equipment mixer pump system and then back through the rotor stator into the hose and finally through the hose management system to the extruder head. This hose management system they set up hopefully won't require a person holding it, which is great lending to the overall automation of the project. <laughs> I'm back with Eamon and Aaron who are here in Texas. You'll remember them from the prints in Virginia and now they're here helping the R Square team get off the ground. Here you have the, the new setup from uh, Ventures Equipment. Uh, it's a uh, full system that they provide, uh, silo, continuous mixer, pan mixer, and pump uh, with a rotor stator. Uh, so it starts up here at the silo. Uh, improvements here, you've got, uh, you can see up there is a vibrator. Uh, that helps the uh, material to fall through. Uh, that drops here into the continuous mixer. All of this uh, is part of the continuous mixer. Uh, the continuous mixer takes that dry mix and uh, shoots it over here. It, it sort of initial mix. Uh, it's not like a final product, but it, it makes it hydrated. It, if you didn't have this and you were just putting dry mix into there, it'd be really dusty, really cloudy. You'd have to have all sorts of crazy face masks and stuff. It's, it's not good working condition. So this gets it hydrated. It drops into the pan mixer. The pan mixer just sort of moves it around and gives us some time to, to dial it in, add more water until it's really ideal. Uh, once we've got it uh, to the ideal state, uh, we open up the gate and drop it down into the pump. Uh, pump has uh, you know improvements that have also been made. The auger has has changed, um, and uh, that feeds into uh, the rotor stator and then off into the printer where all the uh, real magic happens. My name is Aim Nusain. I'm going to be the lead operator uh, for this project. Right here we have the Black Buffalo print kiosk. You have a four camera display we have hooked up on our nozzle so you have uh, your front of your nozzle your back of your nozzle as well as your 
uh, inside your hopper so you can check your material uh, levels and relay to your mixing station. Uh, you have your main display giving you your location of your, your printer and any errors that would come into play. And your bottom section is all your, your manual parameters you can change. Uh, and this is where you can change between manual motion and, print, and printing actual code, as well as your print speed and nozzle speed uh, at certain increments. What would be a standard number of interactions on a good print day versus a, a high end on a bad print day? Yeah, so um, with something like yeah, on your high extremes, you know, your, your good days, you have consistent material, you have uh, consistent weather, so you're, you're not having fluctuations in that. On a good day, you dial it in and you don't make changes at all over like an, an hour to two hour windows uh, with maybe a minor change for speeding up and slowing down. Um, on, on bad days when your material is all out of whack, you know, those, those uh, changes have to be made more frequently and it's hard. So you have dry material trying to chase down those issues rather than uh, having consistency uh, right after that. I'm here with Steve DeRuin cutting out some, uh, what's going on here? Man, we got some, uh, we got some templates that we're cutting out for our gaskets for our uh, concrete connection on our lines. You got backups? Yeah, plenty of backups just in case anything fails, anything's loose. We can always double them up, make sure we don't have any product spillage or anything like that to manage our uh, waste. All right, it's the calm before the storm. They're preparing to get the mixer pump system going, running the wet material through. The dry layer tests are over, so in a minute they'll begin this test print and we'll see how it goes. Go through the initial process. We put water through, we put slurry through. The material is starting to come through. Uh, however, uh, we'll let go in from. I, I, I'm waiting for viscosity to food, so right now we're a very soupy mixture. There, there, there's no holding, there's immediate, uh, immediate slumpage. Uh, so we can't let this run. Right now my nozzle's off, and so this material is bypassing the auger system and running straight through. There's something uh, way too wet to look for. Uh, good enough to get to a nice. Uh, a nice clay doing material. It goes to go from soup to like a softer of ice cream and then finish on like uh, a really light clay doughy uh, material that can hold up. Decent. I think we're good. Over here they did a small test print before starting the layers of the actual house structure. Speed your tool up, Amen. Slow the extrusion down a little bit, go down. Slow it down some more. Slow it down. Oh, look oh at that you. looks good. There you go. Look at you. Hey, it looks good. That mix is looking good. Now they're beginning the first layers of the house, which are really important, just like a regular free print. It all builds up from the first layers. So if you don't get that right, nothing really goes well going forward. So far, it seems like they're getting a great consistent material flow, which is a very strong start for this ambitious project. With the first layer down, you can see how the building is going to look. There's going to be an inner wall and an outer wall, and even the interior divider walls are being printed for this example. These guys' first large-scale print is going exceptionally well. You might remember some of the other companies I filmed their first prints. There was cracking in the walls, a lot of uneven layers, but we're seeing a very consistent layers. They've got a six-minute layer time, and we'll see how high they can go tonight. If you want to be CEO of a 3D printed construction company, don't expect to be doing desk work. we got Jason here in the field. What are you dressed up to do? Uh, right now, we're dressed up to open up this bag and dump the concrete down in the silo. The whole, team, this going. the whole team is sweating, getting their hands dirty, and really figuring out what it takes to get this system going at its full capacity. Yeah, so in your code, you can run forward, which is your typical print, or you might reverse. Running in reverse, you can go past your point uh, and turn, turn your nozzle on only. When you get to your end point, you can turn just your nozzle back on, allowing you to catch. Uh, catch any errors that happen. 
How it's, much time do you have to fix something before the concrete's too hard to fix it? Uh, depending on the weather, you know, you, it's just until it gets hardened, you have, have a 10 minute window. So with the system, you have independent control of your print speed and your nozzle speed, how fast you're putting in material. With that, you're able to uh, find your ratios of your good mix. And then if, when you slow down, you either increase one. If, yep, we're stopped. Yeah. Um, you have independent carriage. So you can increase your speed independent of your extrusion, vice versa, or find your ratios and do half ticks either direction to keep your same ratio, but increase your input and out, your output and your speed at the same time. The material's running great, but they're starting to run low. So they're reloading their mixer pump system with the large jumbo bags. This is much easier than the 25 kilogram sack of concrete that are manually loaded in by hand. It allows them to put a bunch of the dry mix in mass and then get it running through the system so it ultimately can complete the next layer of the printed structure, which is still going pretty well. On the job site, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. This team was doing a great job paying attention to all the mixing, pumping, and the way the material was coming out. When they started loading in a new bag, the bag tore, and they jumped into action with duct tape. The whole team was there trying to get it fixed so they can get back going in action. They're 10 layers in, and you can see they're getting a great consistency. Their team's ironed out a lot of the communication, so one guy is figuring out how much material is left in the hopper giving instructions to the guy at the mixer pump system to either fill or stop the mixer pump system to make sure you don't overflow the hopper or run out of material. You guys are absolutely crushing it for the first day of this print. Huge print, outdoors, getting great layer quality. Uh, what do you guys think is making you so successful today? Uh, it's good communication, good team. Uh, we took the ego out of the equation and everybody's working for the common good. I think that works well. It, what would you like to improve for the project going forward? daytime getting rid of this heat so we can work in the daytime that's not really anything i can improve with uh practice 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 yeah absolutely i think i've already noticed your team's been more ironing out the communication stuff and now they're really sharp uh, it's always when working with new people the way they talk about that makes needs to be more dry or more wet uh is there anything mechanically you guys want to improve We have a list going. <laughs> uh, I think right now the main focus is uh, hose management. I think that is probably our biggest juggling act right now. Uh, but other than that, I think everything is working pretty well. Uh, we've had, you know, just working your way down the line, I think has been the biggest part. Uh, in intimately knowing each one of these and what they need to do. Uh, to stay in line. We had a little bit of motor overheating because of uh, some dry mix. So, you know, first day stuff. Hey, I'm gonna use this. Solid, man, thank you. These guys are out here working overtime to bring the future of construction to rural Texas. Another great part of this project is they're able to reuse some of the material that came out of the mixing system. It wasn't exactly to their specification, but they give it a little bit more time to become homogenous and well mixed. And they're able to reduce the waste of this project by just putting the bucket from the extruder head with the not so great material right back into the mixer pump system and getting it right instead of throwing it away. While managing that the hopper at the extruder head is at the proper fill level, they also have to maintain a similar balance with the system over here, making sure it doesn't become too full or too empty, which could lead to a clog or inconsistencies. It's all a balance and there's a lot of different things going on at once. So it's a skill that's sometimes an art rather than a science. Hey Chris, you guys are about 12 layers in now. You got some horizontal reinforcement that you put in. Uh, what went well today, and what do you think you guys want to improve? Um, what went well is, I mean, our, our striations on our layers are looking pretty nice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're pretty critical on, you know, seeing other people do certain things, and we have goals that some people are actually know when making. To start? Um, and I think I back up, for the first it. print, it looks really good. So this is just our base, and we can only go up from here.
Uh, yeah, I agree. I've never seen a group for their first large outdoor <laughs> print get this layer quality, so it's really promising. Uh, yeah. Uh, it gets me reinvigorated for the industry. Yeah, not uh, not too bad for a bunch of country boys Whoa. from Texas. What kind of improvements do you want to make? Um, we have a lot, or I have a lot of ideas. Um, we've been working with the guys from Alquist uh, to improve uh, the operator's control over the system. He has to currently stand at the kiosk and then come back out and onto the pad and we're relaying a lot of information. A lot of that gets lost because of the sound of equipment. Um, you know, a lot's going on. So if we can just eliminate that altogether, uh, we can we can get rid of some labor um, and a lot of just simple mistakes. Because it only takes a few seconds for something to go wrong. Um, other than that, the material feed, uh, we've got a few little things on the pump that can use uh, a yeah. pan mixer and stuff. It won't take a lot. If we can make this work, Again, all we can do is go up and make it more efficient and stronger. Um, yeah, so just follow us and we can see all the neat stuff we can do. Where can people follow you? Uh, you can go to our website. It's the letter R, the number 2, dash texas.com. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, and it's Jason Jones, and I'm Chris Knotts. And on uh, LinkedIn, it's R squared. Awesome. A lot of the prints I've gone to the first day, they might not even print. So this is, uh, you guys have come a really long way and it's a really impressive first day for this big project. Yeah, uh, it's been a lot more. I grossly underestimated the amount of time it took to set this thing up and get everything dialed in. But of course, it's our first time. Um, but, you know, these boys, we all grew up on farms. So we had to fix everything and build everything ourselves. And these guys here have been working in the oil field and on uh, drilling rigs and stuff. So you know how those guys operate. That's who I've got out here. Yeah, every single one of your guys has thrown in their two cents at some point today, and it's all led to a lot of improvements, and I think that's uh, why you guys are having so much success today. Yeah, um, that's why I've been you know, super thankful to have our partnership with uh, you know, Alquist, and these guys have been fantastic. Uh, they've been working right alongside us. They were here really for some training, but it turned into a whole lot of hard labor, and we're almost like 10 days in to 10, con or 10 You're about a third full. days of 100 degree heat. And it's long and hot, and uh, but we're here, so that's all that matters. Hell yeah, all right.